Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, first of all, I've just got to say happy birthday to the lovely Lady Jane. It's her birthday today. Uh, thank you to all those people who've been sending little messages to her. Uh, we've had people round this morning uh, dropping off prezzies and stuff like that, wishing her a happy birthday. So that's the reason for the delay in the broadcast. But anyway, the weather this morning uh, is, you just can't gauge it. Uh, we had a thunderstorm last night. Thank you to Amanda for a weather forecast. We had a thunderstorm at 2 a.m this morning uh we woke up uh, i didn't hear the thunderstorm i've got to be honest but jane said she'd heard it uh we woke up this morning to bright sunshine uh jane started getting the washing on even though it's her birthday and um guess what the weather started to change badly uh, <laughs> while our visitors were here and then all of a sudden i can't work it out but it's very cloudy uh, amanda has forecast thunder and um, uh, thunderstorms uh, later in the day. Uh, cloudy, obviously, as you can see. Uh, but I look across to the other side of the, the house and um, yeah, we've got a bit of sunshine there coming through. Uh, so uh, there's Yanni, the landlord on his way. Uh, so all in all, um, yeah, it's really, the weather today, you just can't gauge it. It's just odd. But anyway, that's looking in the direction towards Kalamaki and Lagana. Um, again, I'm getting spots off me, but I think that's coming from the guttering at the moment, uh, landing on me. Uh, but yeah, that's the weather. Probably, I'm not sure if it's any better where you are at the moment, but let's have a look at the hills, looking across to Amber Lockerbie, uh, down towards Kerry. And as you can see over there, it is also very cloudy at the moment and also a little bit of mist as well, not looking good. And I have a feeling uh, we might get a spot of rain within the next few minutes. So there you go. Uh, somebody's saying happy birthday to Jane. Thank you for that. That's Alf Ling. Not sure where you are, Alf. I know you're in the UK, but I'm not sure which part of the UK you were in. Also, Barbara Telfer. Uh, she's watching as well. Nice to see you looking in. And uh, let's crack on with what's been going on in the last 24 hours, because there has been quite a bit happening here in Greece in the last 24 hours and also in Europe as well and I'll come on to that uh, as um, I do the podcast right first of all then let's have a look at the COVID stats in the last 24 hours uh, COVID actually the new infection rate has dropped slightly you might remember yesterday it was 8,129 well uh, the readings for today excuse me while i'm trying to get comfortable here uh the readings for today then is that it is now 6682 new infections that brings the total amount of infections since everything started up to 853,841. now six new cases were identified after checks into the country that was down on the day before where there were 11. now as regards cases on the island Island. These are looking interesting as well. Uh, Lefkada, they've seen a slight increase from five on the previous report to seven. Um, that island is in the green. Um, cases in Corfu. Now, Corfu really has had a real uh, shift in infections. 78 on the last report to you. Uh, latest report, 139 new infections on Corfu, and they are obviously in the red. Uh, when it comes to Kefalonia, they've had a, a drop in their infection rate. They had seven reported on my last broadcast today. Report three new infections on that island. They are in amber. And as for um, Zakynthos, uh, we've actually had a drop, thank God. We had 31 new infections yesterday. Uh, we have had 14 reported uh, for today. And so we are still in the red, but uh, at least we've had a decline in, in infections. So let's have a look at the deaths at the moment. Unfortunately, the death rate here in Greece has gone up. Um, it's the highest number of daily deaths since May the 5th. Uh, 87 new deaths have been recorded within the last 24 hours. That was up on 80 on the previous day. That brings the total amount of uh, fatalities to COVID uh, since the pandemic started to 17,012. And once again, our condolences to those families that are affected by loss at this time. 
Um, when it comes on to incubations, um, incubations, I said yesterday, had been slightly on the decline at 547. Well, unfortunately, yesterday it's risen again uh, to 561 new infections, sorry, 561 critical cases in ICUs across the country. Uh, that's 346 male, 215 female. Uh, the average age of those people affected is 65 years of age. 84% of those people have underlying health issues or are over the age of 70. And regarding those critical patients, 466 of them uh, were not vaccinated or had been partially vaccinated and 95 of them uh, were fully vaccinated. So again, the uh, Greek NHS is obviously uh, feeling pressure at the moment. Now, yesterday, um, Prime Minister Mitsotakis, the Greek Prime Minister, uh, said that he's going to address the nation today uh, with a focus on the unvaccinated who still account, he says, for the vast majority of ICU patients and deaths. Uh, one further measure being discussed is a lockdown of unvaccinated people on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Anyway, however, the government's emphasis will be on increasing the rate of vaccinations across the country. Uh, Greece at the moment is saying that they are only 62 percent of the population has been vaccinated. So, again, I'll keep my ears open for this announcement that is coming later today to see what plans they have in store. But to be honest, uh, locking the unvaccinated down for Christmas Eve, uh, I, I can't understand the logic behind that. I really don't. Uh, I just think that now the unvaccinated now are becoming like a second class citizen. I was watching reports yesterday from Austria and I've got to be honest, it's frightening times, especially there with the attitude of people in regards to uh, unvaccinated people. And it's kind of worrying. You feel the aura of like uh, the 1930s coming through, uh, especially with the mentality of the people there at the moment. But anyway, um, also, again, with the situation worsening across Greece, resulting in the death rates at levels not seen for the last six months, uh, the health services are continuing to take the brunt of the fourth wave of the pandemic, especially in the country's ICU wards. Uh, conscription of private doctors into the National Health Service in Macedonia, Thrance and Thessaly has begun and uh, it's hoped that this endeavour is going to ease uh, pressure on the hospitals. So already now, private doctors in the private sector are now being forced into the NHS uh, to take on some of the caseloads there. And again, we shall keep an eye on that. Now, meanwhile, the German Chancellor, Angelina Merkel, uh, stated today that the country is in the grip of a drastic fourth COVID wave with infections today reaching a record 52,826. In the uh, light of the crisis, the Chancellor there has uh, called an urgent meeting of the country's regional health leaders for today, uh, sorry, for tomorrow across Europe. Uh, governments are having to impose more draconian measures to try to tackle the crisis made worse by the low level of vaccinations in many countries. And like I said, um, we shall wait and see. Again, Germany is one of the biggest uh, markets for Greece uh, during the, the summer season. So it's always interesting just to keep an eye on how things are going. And also they're the driving force between the, behind the EU as well. And they're the people with the money. Uh, so, again, uh, we'll see how things pan out there. Anyway, um, you might remember yesterday's news. I was talking about a presentation uh, about new road and traffic measures here on Zakynthos. Well, I've got the outcome of that meeting. Uh, the presentation that took place on Wednesday afternoon at the municipal chamber uh, for the Zakynthos Council about interventions uh, across the um, route from Zanti Town to Kerry uh, were presented on behalf of the region by the technical company uh, Tomi SAYE. Now, the creation of junctions at the airport and the intersections by Lagana, they were highlighted for improvement. 
Also, the intersection by Lidl. Yes, I thought Lidl was going to be uh, on that agenda. Now, the intersection by Lidl, uh, the intersection by the uh, school in Amber Lockerbie, and the intersection of Galenos uh, were also uh, a more immediate solutions. Uh, this is what they said at the meeting and needed to be placed where, unfortunately, uh, there has been accidents in the past and people have obviously been killed due to traffic accidents in those locations. Now, the logic of the immediate and short-term interventions were the ones that were prevailed yesterday, at yesterday's preservations. However, all those present uh, elected bodies and engineers agree that comparative, uh, a comprehensive long-term plan is required that will include large-scale exploration. So basically what they're saying, they've highlighted the areas that need immediate attention, but they are looking at long-term plans, obviously, to improve that road between Zanti Town and Kerry, obviously, uh, with much more uh, radical changes to it. However, it should be noted that the solutions proposed for all three of the above locations, including a shorter perspective with the creation of uh, placement of traffic lights and pedestrian markings and longer learn perspective at the intersection uh, in Lidl and Gladanos with roundabout. So I did say about putting a mini roundabout in at Lidl would be a good idea. It looks like maybe that is on the cards, but they're looking at putting traffic lights and road markings in on those uh, turn offs. Uh, going into uh, Lagana and also going off towards the airport by the fire station and also talk about putting traffic lights in around by the school uh, in Amber Lockerbie again to slow traffic down uh, because that's the problem with that road the traffic there just goes so fast and especially in the summer with a lot more traffic on the roads uh, there has been accidents along that road galore so again We'll wait and see uh, if this all comes to fruition and it'll be interesting to see will a milli roundabout go at the little turn off uh, into where the little car park is on the main uh, road. Anyway, um, interestingly, another story uh, referenced the municipality was highlighted uh, yesterday. Uh, September the 28th, 2022 is the new court date. Uh, for the ongoing case of the forged decisions of the municipality of Zakynthos for the loans that were obtained from the Piraeus Bank. Now, this long-awaited trial will be heard in the Court of Appeals in Patras. Now, the case is expected to be examined in the second instance court after an appeal by the former uh, treasurer of the municipality who was found guilty at the first instance. And as it turns out, uh, the road is uh, is still a long nothing. <laughs> this is still a long road of adjournments that has been going on with this court case that still seems to be continuing. Now it should be noted uh, that the municipal councillors of the then opposition party that were in power at the time, or were not in power, but they were the opposition of the party that was in, when this uh, forged um, document was raised for uh, getting money from Piraeus Bank, supposedly for the municipality, uh, they travelled to Patras to testify and did not hide their disappointment at the fact that there's been more postponements to this case and also a new judge has been appointed as well. Now, in fact, they underlined the uh, relevance with a possible compromise between the municipality and the bank in which they are diametrically opposed. So it looks like maybe the bank is wanting to do a deal with those involved with the municipality over what went on. So really, by a, so we say, an out-of-court settlement being done or something being sorted, or maybe the debt just being wiped off, um, with no questions asked, obviously it means that those that were responsible, I'm not going to go into the responsibilities of who and so and so at the moment, but those that were responsible for this are probably going to get away scot-free over what went on. However, uh, we must remind you, uh, this is what the uh, papers were saying, uh, that the case concerns the falsifications of the decisions of the municipal council that were used in the period between 2006 and 2007 
to obtain a loan of 9.6 million euros uh, from the Piraeus Bank. Now, we remind you that within a month, another important trial is taking place regarding Piraeus and more specifically, November the 23rd at a three-member council court of appeals in Athens, the lawsuit concerning this cash receipts of debts issued by the service of the municipality of the bank that is still to uh, go underway so again this has been an extraordinary case here on this island of uh, what was going on in the municipality about the running of the municipality and the way that money was purloined in all sorts of dubious and interesting manners uh, and obviously didn't help for the reputation of Zakynthos as being uh, a non-corrupt island in which to uh, come and do business, etc. But anyway, we shall wait and see what the outcome of this. We've got a bit of a wait, though, until next September. We've still got another tourist season to go there as well. Anyway, just interestingly as well that came through this morning, uh, the Greek state budget is to be submitted to Parliament on Friday. Now, this does not include additional support measures for any sector of the economy, uh, the finance minister was saying uh, yesterday. He said in comments to Sky TV, uh, he said that restaurants and related business sectors have already uh, received 2.3 billion euros since the start of the pandemic and will continue to be supported in 2022. Anyway, the finance minister explained that the government's priorities were determined by the intensity and the extent of the energy and health crisis and were focused on limiting the negative impact on households. Anyway, calling uh, this uh, combination a twin crisis, he said it was limiting the fiscal space available for additional measures, though he stressed that a discussion with the Prime Minister will take place in early December to examine if more fiscal leeway can be created. Anyway, the Minister said that the Finance Ministry will offer a positive recommendation for a plan to raise the minimum wage for the second time in 2022 and reiterate that the state budget envisaged a GDP growth rate of around about 7% uh, this year. Anyway, the financial minister said the expectations, the inflation rate rise to 0.5% this year and by 1% in 2022, nothing he would not be surprised if the inflation rate rose even higher in November and December and would get up to around about 4%. He sounded optimistic, however, the inflation rate would begin falling, he said, in the first quarter of 2022 for the products and services in the second quarter of 2022 for energy costs. So, again, we shall wait and see how the budget is going to uh, plan out here in Greece. And also, again, don't forget, Greece does sort of live this boom and bust lifestyle. Uh, for the summer months, everybody is busy making as much money as they can so that they can survive the winter. And then obviously, once the winter is come, people are coming to the end of their money and the cycle starts again. And of course, things go up and down in price. However, at the moment, people are complaining about the increase in fuel prices, not only just uh, for uh, transport, but also for, for heating as well, because some, uh, lot, some people rely heavily on, uh, on oils. And also, again, on food hikes as well that we are seeing, not only here, but the rest of Europe is seeing uh, increases in the price of food, etc. as well. So again, well, I'll keep an eye on that and we'll see what comes on there. Now, interestingly, uh, Greece recorded the third lowest inflation rate uh, according to the European Union in October. Now, this is what the EU statistical unit has said. They're called Eurostat. Uh, they report a published a report published on Wednesday showed that consumer price index grew by 2.8 percent in October, significantly lower to the 4.4 percent average in the EU. Now, Eurostat said that the annual growth rate in consumer price index was higher in October compared with September in Germany. The inflation, the inflation rate there was about 4.6%. In France and Italy, they were looking at a 3.2% inflation rate. And in Spain, they had a 5.4% inflation rate. And Lithuania recorded the highest inflation rate of 8.2%. 
Now, the cost of energy was the main factor for the price increases, rising 23.7% compared to the same month last year. In September, the cost of energy uh, rose to 17.6%. So again, as I said, inflation across Europe is going up. However, Lithuania being hit the hardest at 8.2. And Greece at the moment, uh, we are looking at an inflation rate growth of about 2.8%. That was what was recorded uh, in, um, in Greece, uh, where the average across Europe is around about 4.4. So again, heating again, and also energy costs, electricity, the two main increases of increase. No mention of food there in that report. However, I think that will probably come at some other point. Anyway, um, an interesting other little story aside, uh, the trial began yesterday of two Greek police officers who originally had been sentenced by the court of the first instance to eight years in jail for torturing the now 40-year-old uh, Christopher, uh, sorry, Christos Chris Chronopolis at the uh, Kalathani Police Department in Athens in 2007, leaving him will be bound for life. Now, the court of the first instance later turned the offence into a misdemeanour for the two police officers who were acquitted as the charges was statute barred due to the lapse of five years. Anyway, the victim was arrested by officers after being notified by locals that he was harassing patrons at a cafe in uh, Karanu Square. Uh, he was later taken to a local police precinct, but was rushed to a hospital a few hours later with head and other injuries and underwent surgery. Police at the time had claimed that the victim injured himself while trying to avoid arrest and hit a bar of a cafe. Well, there you go. That case is now ongoing. Um, and then have I got an and finally story for you? I can't remember if I got an and finally story this morning. And finally, yes, I do. And it's a nice, happy story. Greek pop star and winner of the Eurovision con uh, Song Contest, Helena Paparazzou, uh, on Wednesday was named the first Goodwill Ambassador of the United Nations uh, Children's Fund in Greece. Anyway, the announcement came ahead of the International Children's Day, which is celebrated every year on November the 20th. And uh, Ambassador Paparazzu will now strive to raise public awareness about the protection of children's rights in Greece, while also contributing to UNICEF's efforts to ensure a better future for every child uh, with the implementation of targeted national programs and actions. Uh, she said, it's a great honor to but also a huge responsibility for me to become the first member of UNICEF's Global Ambassadors Program in Greece, supporting in this way the United Nations work in our country for every child. Anyway, bless her, Elena Paparazzo, I'm your lover, undercover. Yeah, number one, I remember that in the Eurovision, so I remember here when uh, Greece won the Eurovision Song Contest in 2005 and the country went absolutely nuts. They just won the, the European football uh, just the year before and in 2005 uh, they won the Eurovision Song Contest and uh, only to lose it to Italy. Sorry, no, losing it to Turkey the following year with Lordi's song. Uh, and of course, obviously, uh, putting on the Eurovision Song Contest here in Greece as what happens if you win it, you've got to then put it on in your country. But anyway, I'm pleased about that. Yeah, Elena Paparazzo, nice lady. I think, I, th I know, it's uh, Elena, uh, Elena Vissi that I actually met. I haven't met Elena Paparazzo, but yeah, uh, sounds like cool. I wonder if she's still living in Sweden. Uh, just another point to know, or is that Anna Vissi? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But anyway, congratulations. Right, so uh, let's have a quick look who's tuning in at the moment. Uh, Jan Lawrence is watching. Nice to see you. Uh, Wendy Norcliffe is also watching as well. Michael Woods is watching. Also, Trudy Lewis, Tim Miles, Raffredge Buddy. Nice to see you tuning in. Cy Grindley, you're becoming a bit of a regular person tuning in. Uh, also, Bernard Loftus is tuning in as well. I know you left a comment, Bernard, but I can't see it. Uh, <laughs> Philip Ellis, Amanda, Gre Amanda Gregory up the hill. Thank you for the weather forecast today. Uh, Kyriakos Marku is also looking. 
looking in as well. Lovely to have you tuning in as well. It's really nice when I have Greek people tuning in, wondering what that Brit on his balcony is up to. Uh, it, it does. Uh, it, it is nice, actually. That you're, you guys are taking an interest in what's being said about your country and about your island as well. Anyway, Barbara Telfer, I'll give you a wave back. Alf Ling uh, actually lives in Suffolk, so uh, send my regards to Suffolk. I don't know what the weather's like there at the moment. Seems everybody's having really bad rain everywhere. Uh, Alf Ling is also tuning in as well. He says happy birthday to Jane. Uh, also, uh, anybody else got happy birthdays as well? Oh, Alf, is it Alf Ling in Suffolk? I'm just trying to... I, I, do you know what? They should get a better system for being able to keep tabs on your messages as you're doing a live broadcast. That's all I can say. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, Jane today enjoying her birthday. Uh, we're off to Stecky this evening just for a little meal between the two of us. Um, I'm not going to say how old she is, but shall we say that next year is a big, big one. Uh, and again... Uh, we're just going to have a, a nice, pleasant day today. Uh, I'm uh, going to be busy producing shows for when I'm away in the UK. Uh, Jane's got a few little jobs and chores to do. But tonight, it's off down to the old Stecky, a little little walk down there and a little stagger back <laughs> after enjoying uh, the delights of there. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you again for uh, all the uh, happy birthdays for Jane. She greatly appreciates that. She doesn't do Facebook. She does Instagram, though, uh, but she don't do Facebook. But anyway, I will then uh, catch you later. Ta-ra. Have a good day. Bye-bye.